we're a home, and when children come to stay at Noy's home, they find a loving environment. Where they're given opportunities to truly experience a family environment just on a really large scale. The majority of our kids are here because of really unfortunate circumstances, and there's just not a stable home environment for them. They come to Noise Home and they find stability and structure and routine, and my hope for the children of Noise Home is that they are able to come here and to see that they, they have lots of people who believe in them, and they know that if they're determined to overcome whatever adversities they may have faced in their early life, that they absolutely can. Uh, 1933, my mother abandoned me. And 1948, I believe. So my mother had us put in here because she was working. At that time, Noy's home was known as the home of little wanderers, and it was an orphanage. But the Noy's home is quite a place, because the Lord only knows what I'd have been if I hadn't been. <laughs> And I never will, as long as I live, forget this place. And it was a home. Now, you take an abandoned baby with nothing. Uh, what does a noise home mean? It means everything. For 125 years, we've provided care for kids who didn't have anywhere else to go. Mr. Noyes was taken by how many children were unaccompanied, and he felt very strongly that there needed to be a separate children's home, and that's really where the Noyes home began. The Noyes Home for Children was a gift to the St. Joseph community by Mr. and Mrs. Charles and Sarepta Noyes. Mrs. Noyes was part of the LUBA board, the Ladies' Union Benevolent Association, that began way back in 1873. They wanted to help those in need in our community, and it started with a church Bible study group of very forward-thinking women who wanted to do more than read the Word, they wanted to live the Word. So they rented a small A-frame home and took in man, woman, or child, regardless of their ability to provide for themselves. Our legal name is Home for Little Wanderers, but we became known as the Noise Home because of the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Charles Noise. So they were incredibly generous. You might think, why did they want to have a children's home? They had four children. Only one of them made it into adulthood. It is my belief that this is a home to be a memorial for their children, to pr try to prevent any other families from experiencing the grief and loss that they experienced themselves. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Noyes approached Delilah Dolman, longtime board president of the Ladies' Union Benevolent Association, to talk about their desire to build a children's home. It took two meetings before I think she fully understood the scope of their gift. They wished to purchase the land to build a home and to create not one but two trusts to be able to fund the project. They chose this particular plot of land because it was a high point in St. Joseph. They believed that if children woke up in the morning, they could walk toward the sun and be able to find the resource that would help provide for their needs. This is a really neat piece of, of the Noyes home history as well. It's the Howard Engelman clock. Howard Engelman was a young man who lived at Noyes home. The story goes that he ran away multiple times and he had just really endeared himself to the director at that time. Ultimately, um, he had been placed with a couple of different families and for whatever reason those placements didn't work so he always returned to Noyes home. Age 15, he decided that he was an adult, he was grown and he ran away to the south, joined the Merchant Marine and sailed the high sea. And when he was on his deathbed, he asked for the U.S. Consulate to be contacted on his behalf that all of his worldly possessions would be sold and that all of those monies would return to Noyes home, the only home that he ever knew. With those funds, this clock was purchased in his honor and has hung here ever since. This is a portrait of Mr. William Childs. He was the executive director from 1970 to 1992. And I'm sure you'll hear many wonderful stories about Mr. Childs from our past associate board members, as well as past employees, and possibly even community members. He was truly just an amazing man, and certainly someone that I, I very much look up to and try to pattern my own time as executive director. Mr. Childs wrote the following quote, when a former president came up with the phrase of a thousand points of light representing volunteer services, he must have been flying over St. Joseph. The Luba board is a prime example of true volunteerism, 
giving of oneself for the benefit of others with no material benefit or reward. In 2011 and 2012, we did our very first ever capital campaign to be able to expand our services. Our campaign was called Opening Our Doors Wider. We knew that in our community there was a significant need for population zero to five to have a safe haven. And I'm so grateful that the Ladies Union Benevolent Association had the vision to be able to see that they would be able to care for the zero to 18 population and ensure safety for the youngest residents of St. Joseph and the surrounding communities. So this is our nursery. Hi guys. Hey. Okay, renovations began in 2012 on this space and ultimately we opened this space in October of 2012. It was a little bit slow and, and quiet in the nursery initially, um, but I tell you what, we sure picked up steam. That first year that our nursery and pre-K were open, that summer we had 25 children under the age of five. And I tell you, dinner time is the time that you can tell just how full our house is, when you can see all of their, their faces sitting at that dining table. This is our dining room. This is where children have all of their meals, but it's so much more than that too. We have our dorm meetings in here. We have study hall in here. We also do group and recreational activities in here. Um, we do rec therapy um, to be able to help the kids work on communication and problem solving skills. Um, but this is truly one of the heart and souls um, parts of Noise Home. We serve all of our meals buffet style. We wish we could do family style, but when we have 34 to 40 children at any given time, that makes it a little bit challenging. We do have a full-time cook who is in the kitchen preparing food for the weekend. Elizabeth, this is Elizabeth. She's our full-time cook. She's here Monday through Thursday, preps everything in advance for the weekend. Um, we try to teach our kids as many, as many skills, lifelong skills as we possibly can. That includes cooking, doing dishes. Um, everybody helps out in whatever way um, that they can. And that's important that the kids learn that everybody needs to contribute to the household. This is our boys' staircase. Our girls utilize this one. We try to keep our genders separate as much as possible to ensure that, you know, hormones don't do anything to get in the way. Okay, this is our boys' dormitory. Prior to renovations, and this is really where phase two of the capital campaign started, I used to always joke that this was my least favorite part of the tour, because as you'd walk through these doors, you'd be hit with the worst locker room odor you can imagine. Uh, 120 years of, of boys will do that to a space. The biggest change were the changing of our layout. It used to be this was one big open space on this side, and that was one big open space. It felt more like a military barracks, or even an orphanage style. So as you walk through here, you'll see each space has two beds, two storage units and two dressers. Some of these spaces are more well kept and clean than others, but we have to remember that this is their home. Um, and truly, this is the best example of how our community comes together. So we have a garden that our children help with the planting, the weeding and the harvesting from. So that's truly the epitome of, of community collaboration. It's beautiful when you look at it from above. It's a wonderful space for our children to be able to utilize. So this is the girls' dormitory, and oftentimes people are amazed by how much larger it looks and feels, and in reality, it is a larger space. By history, we've always served more older children that are females and more younger children that are boys. Um, this particular space, similar to the boys' dorm, does have a little girls' hangout area and an older girls' hangout area where they watch movies, play video games. Obviously, there's a tremendous number of dolls and play sets, things of that nature. I, then, of course, we have our, our double occupancy all along this wall. This area, it really depends upon the populations that we have currently. Oftentimes, this would be more for our middle school and high school area, but occasionally our elementary girls do end up sleeping over here as well. Oftentimes I refer to this as the not so pretty side of Noise Home, but the essential side. Um, we receive donations from our community and it's so vital that we do. Oftentimes children come with only the clothing on their backs and most of the time they're ill-fitting, stained and worn out. It's important that we have the support of our community and in-kind donations. Um, we're so grateful that the community keeps us 
our totes full so that we can provide for those kids. It may seem like we have a lot, but the reality is we can go through a size of diaper stash very quickly. This is our new laundry room. Our old laundry room was contained in that room behind you and was really very modest. So the charm of our home can be felt throughout. We have our lovely brick exposed walls and little details that people often miss. This room is what we call our take a seat room. And I think it's important that we talk about how this room really came to be. Way back in the 1990s, it was mostly used for storage, but it was clear that there needed to be a space for the children to be able to have a family room. And so they wanted to be able to watch television, to play games, to have movie night. It's used for um, study hall during the school year, staff meetings. Um, occasionally we'll even have board meetings down here, but the true purpose of this space is to be able to have that family community. You'll notice we have a lot of, of positive um, posters, we call them, throughout, just to encourage not only our kids, but also our staff, because our staff have really challenging jobs of being caretakers for individuals that aren't their own biological children. All right, so this is our Family Service Coordinator's office. We call them FSCs here at Noise Home. And they work with the children and they work with their families to identify what it is that that family needs in order to be reunified. This is the Noise Home store, and it's because of our community that we have the opportunity to be able to provide children with positive incentives for behavior change, as well as gifts for birthdays and holidays. Um, truly, without the community's donations at Christmas time and around the year, there's no way that we would be able to do this. So here at Noise Home, we utilize Conscious Discipline, and it's a whole social-emotional program that allows for children to be able, and adults really too, to work on improving self-regulation. So our staff learn how to recognize what brain state the child is in, and then is able to help calm that brain state and get them into a higher state where they can talk about what they can do differently next time, and hopefully teach them that they are safe and that they can handle whatever situation is thrown at them. So this is my friend Jeremiah, and he is a safe spot rock star. Why would we come to the safe spot? If you're, if you're sad. Ah, you could come here if you're sad. Mm-hmm. If you're scared. You could come here if you're scared. He's pointing out the feeling buddies, and these really help us to be able to recognize the kids can see the different faces and see, oh, I might be feeling this way. <laughs> you can do it. You absolutely can. Okay, can you say bye? Um, at first it was a little intimidating because I kind of felt abandoned by my family, but after about halfway through my stay here it felt like home. Everyone was so welcoming. No matter what, they were always there for you. And it meant a place that I could always go to, that I could always call home no matter what happened at my actual home. I could always come here and feel safe and feel protected. When I was seven years old, it was 1969 when I came. My father was an alcoholic and very abusive. So then my mother decided to put us here. I wouldn't have traded it for the world knowing, I mean, the way I am now, I would not have chosen to stay at home. I would have chosen to come here because it's that security. I think that I've learned working here and being a past resident that sometimes it doesn't just take a child needing to be whooped into shape. They need a combined effort from Noise Home, and they need to know that they're doing a good job. I'd probably say around between 2010 and 2012, I think I was here two and a half years, so my mom, my mom couldn't take care of me. She had stuff to deal with, brought me here. When they brought me, they took my brother. My brother went to my grandma's and left me here, so. I mean, you know, these people stepped in and did their part, and uh, I don't know, it was a good feeling to know that I was here. It was a very safe place. I knew when I was here, I was going to be taken care of. 
you gotta think if it wasn't for this place, who, where would I be? That, uh, that crosses my mind a lot. The Noise Home specifically works with families that are in crisis by creating a stable environment, a good structure for kids whose families are in crisis. That's very unique to St. Joseph. Need is as great, the mission is as great today as it was when the Noise Home was established 125 years ago. Many of these kids are, we're getting them in the formative years and I don't know that there's anything more important for our community, anything than getting these kids ready for school. It's crucial, so I think it's having an enormous impact. It's having an enormous impact on those kids, I guarantee you. The mission is an invaluable one to our community and they need to understand the value that the Noise Home provides for children and families, but they also need to know that the Noise Home has never received state or federal funding. It's been through the generosity of the community and we need to continue to carry that torch forward so that the, the families and the children in need today can continue on. It's such a critical need that this is, this is the community taking care of their own. I think thanking the community for the wonderful support that they've given in the past and the encouragement for the future, uh, it's a wonderful thing that we've got so much to be proud of here. I honestly believe that if the noise home wasn't here, I wouldn't be alive. So as far as I'm concerned, it gave me the start. It's that sense of home. I think that's the main thing. It's just a sense of home. Oh, I am definitely thankful for the noise home. It taught me to be a happy, halfway decent person. So I feel like we really rely on the niceness of people to get by here and I wouldn't probably have had a lot of the things I have now if it wasn't for people in the community. And I just feel like Noise Home does a great job helping kids get on the right track. I'd probably be dead homeless if it wasn't for Noise Home. I feel like Noise Home changed my life. It gave me a purpose that I didn't know I had. And I think, I think that's what noise home means to the community. I think that there needs to be more noise homes. <laughs> I still made it, you know what I mean? I got a good job, I got a family, and if, uh, if it wasn't for the noise home, yeah, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And, uh, I wish I could say it without tearing up, but man, it's just such a good feeling to have people who care about you. Especially when the people that are supposed to didn't. That's, uh, it's a replaceable feeling.